Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas of Aiba Communications, and today I have a very interesting little twist for you. Today we're going to be talking about how you can run your Micro Four Thirds Panasonic camera off of USB. Okay, I know there are a lot of GH3s, GH4s, GH5s out there circulating the market, and I will admit, I am one of the people that have picked up some of these old cameras because today it is streaming is so much a big part of the industry. Doing multiple cameras that all match is really key. And getting a bunch of GH3s, GH4s, and GH5s is a great way to build an arsenal of cameras, an arsenal of multiple cameras that all look the same. So uh, I'm gonna be using a GH3, but it also works with a GH4. I have not tried this on a GH5, but given that the battery is the same, as long as you're not using the advanced, um, the, the parts that need more voltage, more capability, this should still work fine with the GH5, probably not with a GH6. Um, so uh, what I have here is a standard Micro Four Thirds GH3, tilt swivel screen, and pop open battery right here. And let's look at my overhead. And right here you can see standard battery compartment. Now, these don't run off of USB. There is no USB connection in here. There is a, a little AV dongle. There's HDMI out. There's a headphone out and there's a microphone in. There's a remote in on the front or trigger on the front. There is your, your card slot right here. And then here is your remote slot right here. This is just your flash trigger right there. And that's literally all the ports, I mean, aside from your flash connections right here, that's all the ports on this thing. So you might ask, how am I going to run this camera or the GH4 or the GH5 off of USB? That's impossible. Well, it's not actually impossible. The way you're going to do this is with an adapter. And what these things do is these fit in the battery compartment and act like a little battery to the camera. But these are connected by a cable. And I, I just finished using these on the shoot and goes to a big power adapter. And so you have all of this. And if you're gonna be using multiple cameras, this can get kind of unwieldy I mean, it takes AC, converts it to DC, and then that goes into the battery. And the cameras are designed for this, actually. If you come in here and you put this dummy battery in here, there's a little pop-out right here on the, on the edge here. You pop this out, run the cable out, close the door, and it comes out this opening that is designed into the camera specifically for this purpose. Now, this works great. It's this part that I'm looking to change because if I'm gonna do a bunch of cameras on a big shoot, if I could simplify this, I might be ahead. So I have found this little DC adapter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, give it a test, and this includes a little USB adapter right here. Now, the cameras run on 7.2 volts to 8 volts. USB is 5 volts. How do you get there? Well, normally you would use what they call a voltage buck, bucker. It bucks it up. It would take 5 volts and increase it to, to 7.28 volts. The problem with that is you steal amperage to increase voltage. And over USB, there's not a whole lot of amperage to start with anyway. So if you look very closely, this is delivering the nine volts that is key. Because if you, down, if you bring down nine volts, you get more amperage and you get seven volts. You get seven volts with more reserve amperage from nine than you would if you tried to increase five dropping your amperage down. You'd get nine, you, you, get, you would get to seven volts, but you have so little amperage that you probably wouldn't be able to power the camera and the autofocus and everything else that the camera needs to do. So starting with a power USB power adapter that does nine volts, that's the key. And this adapter comes with a little USB connector. 
This is the voltage converter, a thin cable, a little releasable, just like the other one. So you can plug it into the part that goes in the camera. So this doesn't really change. I could use the ones that I have from the other, from the other adapters. With this one, should something happen, I plug this in right here, run the cable through, close it. Then I take this, I plug that in, and this is the whole adapter. This is it. This is much easier to manage in a kit, especially with multiple cameras. Again, if you're just using one camera, it really doesn't matter. If you're using five cameras or more, then these things start to add up. So this little adapter makes it much easier. I'm gonna plug this into an outlet I have right here on the table. And then I am going to turn this on. And you can see right there, just powered with this, cable going into the bottom, I have my camera. Autofocus is working great. Whoop. It's doing a self timer now. And so you can see those functions are ready and ready to go. These little adapters, I have tested these recording with an autofocus lens for over five hours and had zero issue with these things maintaining the record there was no power issue there was no automatic shutdown issue there was no low battery issue or anything like that so i can safely say that this power adapter does do what it says it is going to do it's going to power your gh3 gh4 and probably your gh5 cameras as well my name is anthony barocas for aiba communications Thanks for watching.